Okay, guys, um, today we are going to talk about essential question two, how to identify and describe the nature of subatomic particles. So yesterday we talked about what information we gather from the periodic table, mostly about those subatomic particles, right? So I had you define those yesterday. Um, we are moving um, then into the atomic theory or atomic model tomorrow, okay? So yesterday these are the things we discussed. We discussed the information that we get from the periodic table about each element. So we get the name, symbol, atomic number, atomic weight, or atomic mass. Okay. We talked about the fact that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons and electrons, and the, that the atomic weight minus the number of protons is equal to the number of neutrons. Okay, so those are all things we talked about yesterday. So one of the things that I wanted to kind of bring back up, which kind of like as a bridge between our essential questions, is the atomic mass unit. Now we talked about this briefly yesterday. We're going to talk about it again. One atomic mass unit, one AMU, is is basically, not exactly, but close to one proton or one neutron, right? We talked about that yesterday. We talked about how the mass of a proton and a neutron um, are about one. And we can't, we don't typically use grams for something like this like we have for mass before because the numbers would just be so unbelievably small it would be hard to work with, okay? Now, our atomic mass comes from how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are there are that there are in an atom. So they add all those masses together, and that's how you get your atomic mass on the periodic table. Okay? There's one. Whoops. Go back one. Let me go back one. Give me a chance to get that out of your going to show you what I just said, okay, or what was on the last slide. Each of these um, are the masses in atomic mass units. So a proton and neutron are about one, and an electron is 0 .0005. So see how much smaller the electron is? Significantly smaller, right, than the other two. You don't have to copy down these numbers, okay. Well, what I want to show you is this. So see over here, this is actual mass in grams. So remember when we talked about mass in general, we talked about one gram being what? Anybody remember? One paper clip, right? One paper clip, whoops, I just dropped it. One paper clip, sorry, is one gram, right? Okay, so look at the mass of an electron in grams. You guys done scientific method before, or scientific method, scientific notation before? Yeah. Okay, so 10 times 10 to the negative 28 means you take the decimal point and move it 28 spots to the left, right? Which means we would have 27 zeros. Okay, this is the mass of an electron. This is the mass of a paper clip, which is not very much, right? Paper clips are not very big, right? So look at the difference between the mass of a paper clip and then the mass of an electron. Now, I don't want you to get confused. Protons and neutrons are not that much bigger. They're bigger than an electron, so relatively they're a lot bigger. But look, these are both 10 to the negative 24, right? So there'd be 23 zeros instead of 27, but still, right? Really, really small. So just a reminder that we talked about charges yesterday. Electrons have what type of charge? What type of negative? Good. Protons are positive, and neutrons are neutral or have no charge, right? Great. Okay. All right, so I do want you to write these things down. This is going back into our isotopes. Now, if you want to... You know what I want you to do? Just copy, well you guys I guess already wrote it down. You don't have to copy this down if you want to because you already wrote it on your bell ringer. Um, but all atoms of a particular element that have the same number of protons and electrons but differing number of neutrons are called isotopes, okay? So they're going to have a different atomic mass 
than an element that has the same number of protons and electrons but different number of neutrons. Okay, so the atomic mass will be different. But what's not going to change is the atomic number. Write that down. The atomic number is not going to change. Okay? The atomic number is not going to change. The atomic mass will change, but the atomic number will not. So while some of you are finishing off as you're writing, um, so I'm going to give you an example. Carbon has three isotopes, okay? Carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Carbon-12 is the one you see on the periodic table. So if you look at carbon on the periodic table, you're going to see that its atomic mass is 12, okay? So when we say carbon-12, or carbon-13, carbon-14, those numbers are the atomic mass, okay? Carbon-12 occurs 98.93% of the time, okay? So if you find, if you come across a carbon atom, okay, you're in, most likely 98.9% of the time is going to be carbon-12. But there are other two other isotopes, carbon-13 and carbon-14. Those relative abundances, okay, meaning the amount that it occurs naturally are not going to really fluctuate all that much. Okay, that 98% is going to stay pretty steady. Okay? So that's what I wrote on the next slide. Okay? Now, these two things you need to write down as well. The relative abundance of each isotope is usually constant, which is what I was just talking about. Isotopes containing more neutrons have a greater mass. Now, that makes sense because we know that neutrons have about a mass of about 1 AMU. So every time you add a neutron, you're adding an additional AMU, so the number would go up by one every time that you add another neutron. <coughs> the other thing that you really need to know, make sure you put a star next to that third one, is that isotopes have the same chemical behavior. So no matter which isotope you're working with, they're going to react the same way. They're going to do the same things as all the other isotopes of that same element do. Okay? They're not going to change. Put a big star next to that third one. Isotopes have the same chemical behavior.
also, this example is potassium. So potassium has three main isotopes as well. Potassium-39 is the one that's on the periodic table. So when you look at atomic mass for potassium, you're going to see 39 on the periodic table. But there are two other isotopes, okay? So notice across here that 19 stays the same for the protons on all three and the electrons. Guys, 19 is the atomic number of potassium. The atomic number does not change. Atomic number does not change. So the number of protons and the number of electrons are always going to be the same, okay? Now, the number of neutrons, though, look, it goes from 20 to 21 to 22. This number here is the atomic mass. You're going to notice down here that they write it as a superscript, like up at the top. Okay, that's the atomic mass. So you're going to subtract 39 minus 19 to get 20. 40 minus 19 to get 21. 41 minus 19 to get 22. Okay? So we're going to try an example. So I want you to write this down. Where's the button? Is it big? On top. On top. Yeah. <coughs> okay? So this says carbon, but it should say oxygen. Naturally occurring oxygen consists of three isotopes, 16, 17, and 18. State the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in each of the following. Okay? So we're going to work through this together. We're going to do. Find the number of protons for each one, find the number of electrons and then neutrons, okay? So I want you to take a look at your periodic table and find oxygen for me. What is the atomic number for oxygen in eight? Eight. Does everyone see oxygen is number eight? We see that? So how many protons does oxygen have? Eight. Eight. Okay, because that's our atomic number. Now, atomic number doesn't change. So all the way across here, all three of these isotopes are going to have eight protons. Okay? And all the way across, we're also going to have eight electrons. Right? So the protons and electrons are the same. So in order to calculate the number of neutrons that we're going to have, we are going to subtract. Now this number up here, and you guys, you're going to have a quiz tomorrow over the periodic table. So you're going to need to recognize that when the, they are written this way, this is the atomic, oh my gosh, look, I'm writing it wrong, atomic mass. Okay? This is the atomic mass. So when it's written as a superscript like that, that's the atomic mass. Okay? So you're going to take that number, the atomic mass, you're going to subtract the number of protons to get the number of neutrons. So 16 minus 8 gives us 8. Now we have 17 minus 8, which will give us 9. And then 18 minus 8, which will give us 10. Okay? So notice again that the number of protons and electrons are not changing. It's just the neutrons because the mass is different, okay? You have more neutrons, you have a higher mass. Okay? Questions so far? Okay? So you try one. These are the isotopes of Krypton. So Krypton 78, Krypton 80, and Krypton 84. So I'd like for you to write these down now. And find Krypton on your periodic table. Go ahead and fill these in. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that.
atomic number for krypton? 36, right? So where am I going to put 36 up here? Protons. And where else? Electrons. Awesome. Now, how do I find the number of neutrons, Sarah? Okay, it gives you 42. Great. Okay, how about the next one? We have Krypton 80. Daniel? 44. Okay, how did you get 44? Great. And Matt, how about Krypton 84? 84. 36. Which gives you? 48. Perfect. Okay. Make sense, everybody? Question. Yes. 